In this video, I'll teach you five creative bending techniques for melodic rock soloing. First, I'll play a short eight bar guitar solo, which I especially wrote for this YouTube lesson. It has all five techniques in it. Let's go. Hi guitar players and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maarten and in today's lesson we're playing melodic rock licks with bends in the key of D minor. More specifically, I'm showing you five of my favorite creative bending techniques. Feel free to skip around using the timestamps below. There's one for each technique. During the lesson you can follow the tabs on the screen or as always you can download the full lesson guide with all the tabs and charts. That's a free download from my blog. There's a link to that in the description below. If you find value in this lesson, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out a lot. Leave a comment or a suggestion, or if you're interested, you can become a supporter at buymeacoffee.com. There's a link to that in the description as well. Okay, let's dive in. Let's take a look at bar one. Bar one starts with a standard pentatonic bending lick to get us warmed up. I'm playing on my Sir Modern Pro, I'm playing on the bridge pickup through a Fractal X8 preset with a fair amount of overdrive. Bend the 13th fret on the B string a full step up. Pick the string with a downstroke, and by the way it's all downstrokes in this video so don't worry too much about the picking. To perform the bend, regular watchers of my videos will notice, I recommend playing this type of bend with three fingers, supporting the third finger of the fretting hand with the first and the second finger for strength. And make sure you're firmly grasping the string with the pad of your third finger, thus dragging the string along the 13th fret. And also make sure you don't slip under the G and B strings but rather bend against them, so they get muted. And I'm always muting a little bit with the palm of my right hand too, on these strings, the E, the A and the D string, to avoid as much unwanted noises as possible. So that's our first bar, that standard pentatonic bend. And you can fill that entire first bar with it. For reference, we're mostly playing the D minor pentatonic scale in this video. That bend I just showed you from the 13th fret on the B string, that's a C, is a bend towards the, the D that you would normally find on the 15th fret of the B string. Both notes are part of the minor pentatonic scale, so this is a simple pentatonic bend. You can find the full pentatonic scale chart in the lesson guide that you can find on my website. Now that we're warmed up, let's take a look at our first creative bending technique. That's the pre-bend. In bar two, I play a pre-bend, the first of our five techniques, and I worked it into the following lick. A pre-bend is a technique where you're first bending the string without playing it. You can do this with any bend you like. In this case, it's a full step bend from the 15th fret on the E string. Bend with three fingers, like we did before, and again, I'm muting most of the strings with the side of my right hand to avoid as much unwanted noise as possible. Although we're not playing the string yet, just bending a string usually causes a bit of extra sounds. For example, this is what you hear when I'm not muting, and if I do mute, it's a lot cleaner. So we're bending a full step up without picking, and only when the bend is complete, pick the string. So this is why it's called a pre-bend, since we're bending before we're hitting the string. So bend first and then hold the string for a bit. On the tab you can recognize a pre-bend by the vertical arrow up and the one means pre-bend a full step up. 
What usually follows a pre-bend is a release. Releasing the tension of the string, bringing back the string to its original pitch. And the downward longer arrow on the tab points to the target note after the release. So we're pre-bending from the 15th fret, then we're picking, slowly releasing the string back to its original pitch. Now, obviously some of you will say, how do you know how much force to apply to a pre-bend since you're not hearing the string, you're not hearing the bend, you don't hear the pitch changing. The answer to that is you have to guess. It's a bit of a guessing game and you have to rely on your experience and the muscle memory in your fretting hand. You'll only know if your guess was a good one the moment you're hitting the string once the pre-bend is over. The amount of force you need to apply also varies depending on the type of guitar you're playing and the gauge of the strings that you're using. So it will take some practice and some personal experience before getting it right. This technique is not 100% fail-proof, but I find it very cool when you play a pre-bend, you hit the string and you're right on pitch. I think that's very cool. So that's why I wanted to share it with you. After the release to the 15th fret, pull off to the 13th fret by lifting your third and second fingers. And then pick the 15th fret on the B string with your third finger to end this lick. So let's repeat that from the top, first with a metronome and then with the backing track. So for the metronome, I'll take the tempo down a little bit to 100 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. Now with the backing track. So that's the first of our five techniques, the pre-bend. In my opinion, an essential technique for every guitar soloist. Time to look at our second creative bending technique, the bend and tap. In part three, I play a lick that combines bending, holding the bend, and then playing two right hand taps. So two taps with the middle finger of my picking hand. It goes like this. Bending and tapping is a technique I first heard uh, Rory Gallagher use in a live version of his song Calling Card. But I think when we're talking about bending and tapping, most of us think of Eddie Van Halen and he uses the technique in his solo for the track Panama, for example. That's a great song. Let me show you how this technique works. First, bend the 13th fret on the B string, a full step up, just like we did in the warming up. Pick the string, but this time hold the bend for as long as indicated by the dashed line on the tab. And while holding the bend, tap the 20th fret with the middle finger of the picking hand. Pull back off to the 15th fret. And then tap again on the 18th fret. So we're playing two taps on the B string, the same string that we're bending. Now while I'm tapping, I'm again muting most of the strings of the guitar to avoid unwanted noises. I'm muting with my right hand. So as I'm moving from the 20th to the 18th fret, I'm moving my entire right hand to keep the mute in place. Also, another tip is to play these taps quite forcefully. Everything depends on the strength of your tap. We're not picking the string. So you need a forceful, decisive tapping motion to produce enough sound. And maybe you're asking why the 18th and why the 20th fret? Well, these are notes of the pentatonic scale, but taking into account that the string is bent. Normally you would find these pitches at the 20th and the 22nd fret, but since we're bending the B string a whole step up, everything moves two frets towards the head of the guitar. So on the left on this diagram. So that's why we're finding these notes here. 
finish this lick with some vibrato and watch where I play the vibrato. I'm playing it with my left hand while I'm keeping the right hand tap in place. You can also play the vibrato by wiggling your tapping finger a bit, but personally I don't like that as much. Let's play the bend and tap lick again, this time with the metronome at 100 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. And now up tempo with the backing track. So that's our second technique, the bend and tap. Maybe a less common technique, but a very cool one, I think, that makes these giant intervallic jumps possible during a melodic solo. Also, it's always a bit of a spectacle to see a guitar player tapping, don't you think? Even if it's just two well-chosen taps, just like we did. Time to move on to the third creative bending technique, the bend on bend. In bars 5 and 6 of our 8 bar solo, we're playing a half step bend on top of a full step bend, creating a very melodic bend lick. Let me play it for you once more. The bend on bend technique is very much blues inspired and I think I got it from John Mayer, although I couldn't remember a specific song where he uses it. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Also, I use it towards the end of Lost in Thought. That's a track and a video I released a while ago. It's a track with a very long build-up and this technique really helps to release some of the built-up energy towards the end of the track. Check it out if you haven't already. Let me take you through that bend on bend technique and let's take it step by step because there is a lot to talk about here. There are a lot of moving parts, so to speak. There's obviously the bending with the left hand and there's again some muting going on with the other hand. So first in bar 5, bend the 15th fret on the E string a full step up. And you can see that I'm resting the side of my right hand again on most of the strings to avoid unwanted sounds. But obviously I'm not muting the E string because I'm playing and bending that string. We played that bend before, but now instead of releasing the bend, we are going to cut the note short by now tilting our right hand very slightly to cover all the strings, including the E string, so the sound of our bent note gets muted. You can see you can choke a note very quickly that way. While the note is muted, Hold the bend with your left hand. You can see there's a dashed line on the chart indicating to hold the bend. Push the bend another half step up. So we are in essence playing a pre-bend here on top of a bend. Release your right hand mute slightly so the E string is cleared again. And then play the string that is now bent in total one and a half step above its original pitch. So again, full step bend. Mute the string, hold the bend, push the string another half step up as a pre-bend, release the mute a little bit, clearing the E string, and then play the string that is now bent in total one and a half step. So that first bend is a bend from the G to the A. The second bend adds another half step bend on top to the B flat. And by the way, that B flat isn't part of the D minor pentatonic scale, but of the D Aeolian scale, creating a very melodic emotional sound. Note that you can play this second bend as a regular bend too. For example, but I chose to play the half step bend as another quick pre bend because I like it more that way. I'm using the right hand to mute the strings and to separate the notes. This is also optional. You could play a more continuous sound, if this is the effect you're after. But by separating the notes, you can more emphasize the rhythm. The first note here is a quarter note, the second is a shorter 16th note. Also by muting, you create these little pauses that let your effects, like a delay pedal for example, come through rather nicely. 
What follows after another short pause indicated by the comma on the tab is a bend, a normal bend from the 15th fret again. Full step bend. And now you can release the string back to the 15th fret, back to that G. But without picking the string, so don't pick the string here. And you can give it some vibrato here too. So that's the bend on bend technique, or you could call it the pre-bend on bend that we did. In my experience from teaching this type of lick, make sure you're not prematurely letting go of the string after that first bend. So it's important you keep a firm grasp, you're really holding the bend after that first note. Let's play that bend on bend lick once more with the metronome. One, two, three, four. And now up tempo with the backing track. Playing bends on bends is a great way of expressing emotion in a guitar solo. However, it does require practice as it demands a great amount of control over the strings you're bending. Practice it slow and give yourself some time to learn it. It's worth it. Now let's take a look at our fourth bending technique, the unison bend. A unison bend is a type of double stop, meaning we're playing two strings simultaneously, bending one of them to gradually increase the pitch until both pitches become identical. In bar 7 there are three unison bends, preceded by a little pickup. The first time I heard this technique I thought the sound was made by an effect pedal, but it Turns out the pulsating effect is a result of two different pitches gradually becoming one. It's a very cool effect. You'll find the technique in the chorus of the Roadside Blues video I published last summer. Let me show you how it works. So at the end of bar 6 we have a little uh, pickup. You have two 16th notes, so we'll pull off from the 12th fret of the E string. To the 10th fret of the E string. I would play these with my second and first finger because the transition to bar 7 where the unison bends are will be a bit easier. Or you can just leave out that entire little pickup if you just want to practice the unison bends that are in bar 7. Now to play a unison bend place your first finger in this case on the 10th fret of the E string and your third finger on the 13th fret of the B string. I'm placing my second finger on the 12th fret of the B string and that will help to bend the B string in a minute. So we're playing a D, the 10th fret on the E string and a C, the 13th fret on the B string. The D, we're playing in D, that's the key of the track, we're playing D minor pentatonic also it's the root of the underlying chord and relating to D, the C is a flat 7, the note that is a full step lower than the D. Now when we play a unison bend we start by picking both strings with a powerful downstroke, so we're playing them at the same time and then leaving your first finger firmly in place, bend the B string a full step up. So we're moving the pitch of that C towards the D. And in the end both pitches will become identical. Unison means identical in pitch. But the cool effect of this technique is that the friction of the bent note against the unbent note creates this weird and pulsating effect that suddenly disappears. And you can even add some vibrato. Now in my teaching experience the most common mistake is to also bend the first finger. So you really have to keep that finger in place or else it will spoil the effect. 
In the rest of bar 7 I repeat this technique twice, once with the first finger on the 12th fret and the second finger on the 15th fret of the B string, and once on the 13th fret of the E string and the 16th fret on the B string. So the same technique, I'm just following the D minor scale on the E string. And I'm clearly separating each bend from the next with a right hand mute to cut off the sound. Let's play the unison bend technique once more with the metronome. And let's play it a little bit slower again than the backing track. We'll keep the tempo at 100 beats per minute. And I'll include that little pickup at the end of bar 6. One, two, three, four. That wraps up the unison bend technique. Time for our fifth and final creative bending technique, the bend release bend. We're in the final bars of our guitar solo and in the end of bar 8 there's another one of my favorite techniques that's the bend release bend. In essence these are two bends separated by a single release. I'll play it again for you and pay special attention to the difference between the first and the second bend. that bend release bend technique we're bending the 15th fret on the E string a full step up. We've played this bend a couple of times already in this lesson so again I'm muting most of the strings with the side of my right hand. This time release the bend rather quickly and then perform the same bend again but a bit slower. You can see on the tab that the bending arrow is longer, indicating that this is a slower bend. I might even do an incomplete release, so don't worry too much if your release is not a whole step. Sometimes that even helps to emphasize that second, slower bend. After that second bend, release the bend back to the 15th fret. Then pull off to the 13th fret, just like we did in the beginning of the lesson and then end on the 15th fret of the B string with a slide down. A few extra thoughts on the release in between those two bends. First of all, think of the release after that first bend as an active motion, not just a passive motion. Meaning a bent string obviously wants to return to its natural unbent state. But stay in control of the string even during the release, as there's a second bend that follows that release. So always stay in control of the string even during a release. Also there are many different ways you can interpret these bend release bend style licks. You could for example do a half step bend or release and then a full step bend. There are many different ways you can get creative with bend release bend style licks and that's why I really wanted to include them in this lesson. Let's play that once more with the metronome. You may find it even works better at a slower tempo because you have more time to emphasize that slower bend. Also for that second bend the rhythm on the tab is just a suggestion so I would encourage you to use your intuition here. One, two, three, four, one, two. And now let's play that bend release bend lick once more with the backing track.
That concludes our five creative bending techniques lesson. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something from it, from the explanations and the examples that I gave you. Let me know in the comments below which one of these five techniques you like the most. Or maybe there are some other bending techniques you would like to see covered in another video. If you want to practice the little solo with the backing track that I use, that little backing track, I put it on my website. That's www.guitar-inspiration.com. Check out my website for all my lessons and guitar solos. Also, a special thank you to my supporters at buymeacoffee.com. Your support is very much appreciated and helps me to continue growing this channel. I hope to see you in the next video, so subscribe if you want to stay updated. Bye-bye.